Good evening. You're watching the news at 7.30 on ATV. I'm Edna Zhe. And I'm Bo Leung. Here's a look at tonight's top stories. Outrage after recording of confidential Hong Kong University Council meeting leaked to media. Police show off biggest ketamine haul in nine years after busting major syndicate. Taiwanese police rescue kidnapped Hong Kong tycoon held captive for a month. Outgoing Hong Kong University Council Chairman Leung Chi Hong has threatened legal action after someone leaked a recording of a confidential meeting. In the recording, Leung's possible successor, Council Member Arthur Lee, makes comments about former pro Vice Chancellor candidate Johannes Chan. The mysterious recording is believed to be former Education Minister Arthur Lee speaking at a Hong Kong University Council meeting on the 29th of September when members discussed appointing former Lord Dean Johannes Chan as pro vice chancellor. It's not known who recorded the speech, which was aired by commercial radio today. Why is this political party so key on this candidate? Is it, you know, in the Mainland University, they have a Dong Wai Shi Kei. Do they want a Dong Wai Shi Kei at Hong Kong U? Is he a Dong Wai Shi Kei? Is he put in here as a Dong Wai Shi Kei? So, I don't know, forgetting about the politics, all of these things make me feel very uncomfortable and very uneasy with this candidate. Lee is heard calling Chan a nice guy, but then saying he is not qualified to take up the key managerial post. Council member Zhang Ki Chung confirmed that the recording is genuine. Since the reasons discussed were so unreasonable, it makes sense that some members have chosen to disclose them, Zhang said. Outgoing council chairman Leung Chi Hung, who chaired his last meeting yesterday, said he is shocked by the leakage, saying it is a serious breach of confidentiality rules. I really feel that this is ridiculous. And I believe that we should seriously, strongly condemn such activity. Because such activity not only disrupts council's confidentiality and therefore make any discussion in the future ineffective, but it's also intrude into people's privacy. The University of Hong Kong is now seeking legal advice to see how we can take legal action on this. In a statement, Leung also said the university will make all possible efforts to investigate the matter and report it to the police. Police have seized $18 million worth of ketamine, their biggest seizure of the drug in nine years. Six people were arrested, but the syndicate's mastermind is still at large. Arthur Okiola reports. Narcotics Bureau officers unveiled the huge haul seized in Yunlong. More than 140 kilos of ketamine, said to be worth $18 million. Blenders and other tools to dilute the drug were also seized, leading police to believe they had smashed the syndicate, which was a major supplier for the whole city, and not just a specific district. Four men and two women were arrested, the youngest just 17 years old. Officers pointed out that while the drug is more commonly sold by the gram, the syndicate was packaging the drugs in much larger quantities. It's uh, the largest single seizure by the police in 2006. And also the packaging, uh, the, the plastic bags we found is for uh, kilo levels. So we believe this is a high level drug trafficking syndicate. And the roles of individuals arrested, uh, the different ages, uh, we believe that they have different roles to play. A younger person, they, they may be uh, doing the receiving role in the street and uh, try to avoid being detected by police by, or by stopped by police. Police said they believe the drugs came from the mainland. The mastermind of the operation is still at large, and police haven't ruled out more arrests. Arthur Akiola, ATV News. Chief Secretary Carrie Lam has denied claims the government is trying to mislead the public in the upcoming consultation on a universal pension. This comes after draft proposals were leaked. Karin Young reports. The Commission on Poverty is set to carry out a public consultation on retirement protection, but not until the end of this year. However, leaked documents from a meeting of the Commission yesterday show the names of some proposals have been changed. According to reports, the documents avoid using the phrase universal retirement protection, the common term used by lawmakers and welfare groups to describe an across-the-board pension scheme that they have been calling for. 
Instead, the proposals now appear to favor a targeted approach, something the government has already hinted at, saying not everyone needs a government pension. The new wording has been criticized by scholars and lawmakers, who say the terms are value laden. Federation of Trade Unions lawmaker Chen Yunhan said the government is misleading people with the new terms, and it should use neutral terms instead. Chief Secretary Carrie Lam, who is chairwoman of the commission, said she is disappointed that confidential documents have been leaked, and insisted most members support the proposals. Uh, in the uh, Chinese versions that we have presented to the Commission on Poverty, uh, which have been accepted by the majority of uh, non-official members on the Commission on Poverty, is really what I would say is call a spade a spade. Lam also defended the new names, saying the government is just trying to define the differences to help public discussion on the topic. Uh, one direction for uh, enhancing retirement protection is to provide for a universal scheme. Uh, what does it mean by universal scheme? Is regardless of your financial situation, that you will receive the same standard uh, allowance from the government. Uh, the other direction is, of course, uh, what we have been saying uh, on many occasions, is we prefer a targeted approach. And that target must be those elderly who are in financial need. Lam added that the new terms don't indicate the government's stance on the issue. Karen Yang, ATV News. It's a troubling time for Europe with refugees flooding in from war zones and standoffs with Russia over Ukraine and the region's energy supply. Playing a strategic role in the region is Albania, and the country's energy minister is in Hong Kong as part of a delegation promoting the country. ATV's Haminda Singh managed to catch up with him. Big debate in your opinion. Speaking exclusively to ATV's Newsline program, Albania's Minister for Energy and Industry, Damien Jiknuri, touted the advantages of his small but strategically important country. These are important projects going through Albania now. It's the main, the main gas uh, pipeline, which is uh, about to be built in Europe, have started already in Albania. It's an alternative to European energy security besides the traditional Russian supply. With Europe facing a refugee crisis from conflict areas in North Africa and the Middle East, the minister believes the problem can only be solved with multiple players at the table. The most important thing is that, as we talked also before, it's for EU, United States, other big players, international players, to find a solution in Syria, to provide peace there. The world should be unified against this threat. And of course, every, every country must play its role. What's next? The minister has high hopes for Albania's future. In a decade, I want to see an Albania integrated in the European Union, a full member, which can be a good country to visit and a good country to invest. You can watch the full interview here on ATV World this Sunday at 8 p.m. At least 15 people have been arrested in Taiwan after police rescued a Hong Kong tycoon who was kidnapped over a month ago. Wang Yokuan was freed last night and authorities believe a gang from Hong Kong could be behind the abduction. After spending 38 days in the clutches of kidnappers, pictures showed Wang Yokuan looking haggard and bruised after being rescued by police in Taiwan last night. Authorities say the tycoon was grabbed by two men and bundled into a car near his home in Xinjiang district in New Taipei City on the 20th of September. Wong's company, Pearl Oriental Oil, later received an email from his captors demanding $70 million ransom for his release. After more than a month-long investigation, police launched a rescue operation. The tycoon was found in a deserted house in Yulin County and 15 people were arrested. It's suspected Wong's kidnapping might have been ordered by a Hong Kong gang. It's also thought that the kidnappers are linked to Taiwan's United Bamboo Gang, an organized crime network. Wong told local media that during his ordeal, he thought he was going to die and he was brought back from the gates of hell when police officers stormed the building and freed him. Doctors say Wong was visibly shaken by the experience, but he is in good mental condition. The 68-year-old businessman is facing fraud and money laundering charges in Hong Kong related to a 225 million US dollar oil field he bought in the US state of Utah. He posted $5 million bail and was supposed to appear at the High Court today. 
Reports say he may have been given permission to fly to Taiwan for medical reasons a few months ago. The self-made tycoon, also known as Wang Quan, made his fortune investing in property. Overseas, there's widespread outrage at the latest case of apparent police brutality in the U.S. This time, video of a white officer dragging a black teenager out of a classroom. In the incident, also raises questions about U.S. police seemingly criminalizing harmless misbehavior. Arthur Urkeola reports. <laughs> There was immediate outrage and condemnation when footage circulated online showing a black 18-year-old student being arrested by a white policeman in Columbia, South Carolina. According to witnesses, Deputy Ben Fields was called to a classroom at Spring Valley High because the student had her mobile phone out and refused to give it to her teacher. She then apparently refused Fields' order to move from her seat, leading to the confrontation. I think he took it way too far. I don't think a woman should be handled like that. The girl and another student who objected to her treatment were arrested for disturbing school and later released to their families. Fields has been placed on administrative duties while the FBI and Justice Department have opened a civil rights probe to investigate whether any federal laws are broken. The officer has also been barred from every school in the district. It's the latest incident to raise concern about the treatment of minorities by white law enforcers. Race is indeed a factor. And, of course, people will admit something else and say that it isn't. What we do know about South Carolina is that the African-American student population in schools is about one-third of the total population, but two-thirds of the children in the juvenile justice system are children of color. The incident also raised questions about how behavior once handled by teachers has somehow become criminalized because of police in schools. But being stationed there on a permanent basis, what happens is that they're responding in, in a way to criminalize behavior that is ordinary childhood you know, mischief or misbehavior. And so we may be overreacting and over-policing our children. The deputy has worked at the sheriff's office since 2004 and been a school resource officer since 2008. He was presented with a Culture of Excellence Award last November by a school he was previously assigned at. But this isn't the first time his actions have been called into question. He's been named as a defendant in two federal lawsuits, most recently two years ago, for claims that he unfairly and recklessly targeted African Americans. In 2007, a jury ruled in favor of him and another deputy accused of excessive force, stemming from an incident when he allegedly threw a plaintiff to the ground, cuffed, kicked, and maced him until the contents of the mace can were empty. Arthur Akiola, ATV News. There are protests in Nicaragua against a Hong Kong company building a multi-billion dollar canal. But first, Britain says it is keeping its forces in Afghanistan for a few more years, reversing an earlier decision to withdraw them. Ben O'Rourke reports. Britain is once again following in the footsteps of the U.S. and has reversed its plan to pull troops out of Afghanistan. The government insists it was expected. Well, we knew the Afghan forces would be tested in this first fighting season, and they have been, but they do need that underpinning of support, which is why both the Americans and ourselves have agreed to go on doing what we are doing, but to do it for a little bit longer. NATO's combat operations were meant to end in December last year, and Afghans were supposed to take over control of their own country. However, Prime Minister David Cameron admitted in 2012 that the withdrawal plan was flexible because it was based on success. Dozens of Nicaraguans marched in the capital, Managua, to protest against the building of a canal by a Chinese company. The canal, which will rival the Panama Canal, is being built by Hong Kong-listed HKND, owned by billionaire Wang Jing. But Nicaraguans say the 50 billion US dollar project will force people from their homes, destroy farmland and submerge entire communities. The Nicaraguan government insists the canal is vital to boost the economy. The country is the second poorest in Central America. Two people were killed in the US state of Virginia when their car rammed into a house. A witness said the car was driving at high speed when it lost control, hit a fire hydrant and smashed into the building in Alexandria. The driver was pronounced dead at the scene while a passenger died later in hospital. There was nobody in the house at the time of the crash. 
Rap mogul Marion Suge Knight and comedian Mika Cat Williams have pleaded not guilty to a robbery charge in Los Angeles. The pair are accused of stealing a camera in September 2014 in Beverly Hills after they accused the photographer of taking pictures of Knight's son. Knight and Williams originally pleaded guilty but were instructed to re-enter their pleas after a judge said they should stand trial. Knight remains jailed in lieu of 10 million US dollars bail. Knight is also scheduled to appear in court for an unrelated case in which he is charged with murder, attempted murder and hit and run for allegedly running down two men in Compton in January, killing one and injuring the other. Ben O'Rourke, ATV News.